I ask you to provide me with challenges of things that a typical user might need on their Linux operating system. Why? Because whenever you run into a problem and search for it online, you just get a bunch of commands that you execute on the command line. But I say that you don't even need it because the Linux desktop has just become so sophisticated. And today I'm going to prove it. Before we start, we need to set some ground rules. Whenever I speak of the Linux desktop, I typically refer to distributions that are either being marketed as user-friendly or simply as a workstation. That includes distros like Ubuntu, Fedora, OpenSUSE, Sorin OS, Mancharo, Vanilla OS, or essentially everything that comes with a graphical installer and a single desktop environment. Advanced baseline distributions like Debian or Arch are not part of this, since they require a certain know-how to set up. And then there's the fragmentation. While everything I show in this video can be replicated in several desktop environments, the menus and how you operate it might differ. For this video, I'm going to use the latest release of GNOME since it's the most popular desktop environment and ships with most distributions by default. Let's start off with the first thing that basically every Windows user that has built their own PC tries to do. Installing drivers. For most, this issue mostly applies because they have an NVIDIA GPU and that's pretty easy to do. On many Linux distributions, you get automatically asked if you want to install NVIDIA's proprietary driver. And for those who don't do this, we can usually find it in the software store. On Fedora, open up GNOME software, head on down to hardware drivers and install the NVIDIA Linux graphics driver. Now let's reboot and BAM! Done! If you don't find the driver in your software store, then that could be related to a missing check at enable third-party repos during the installation. You can however enable them in the settings right here. On Debian-based distributions like Ubuntu, that's also the way how you can add more repositories. Another question that came up quite a lot was how you can install Windows applications with the compatibility layer Wine. Quite easy. You can watch my last video about how to install game launchers on Linux, where we use an application called Bottles that can also be used to install Windows apps. While not every Windows program will work, a lot of software does tend to do so. Connecting a printer. Okay, so for most personal printers, the experience on Linux is quite interesting. Check this out. Connect it via network or USB cable, open the settings, go to printers and it's either already there or you can add it manually. If you do, then Linux automatically tries to find compatible drivers for it, which it usually finds and you can start printing, scanning or whatever else it can do. If it still fails to do so, then you can try to select the driver manually from the database or use a PPD file if that is something that your printer came with. Overall speaking, connecting a printer to Linux is way easier than it is on Windows. Though to be fair, the experience has improved there as well. Editing PDF files. That's a good one and I always wonder what are you all using on Windows? Adobe Acrobat? Anyway, some desktop environments like GNOME already come with a PDF reader, which allows you to highlight or even write text on a PDF, which you can save afterwards. If your desktop environment or distro doesn't have such an application pre-installed, then you can also just use Firefox. Simply open the PDF with it, write some text, draw on it and add your signature in form of an image and save it. For all of you who want to do even more, then the best program that I discovered personally is LibreOffice Draw. While it isn't a PDF editor per se, it's capable of doing everything that Firefox could. You can attach more PDFs by dragging them in, adjust them in size, remove sites completely and much, much more. If you work for a company or you need to sign a document that needs an actual digital signature, then you can also set up those, though it's not that easy. But at this point, you're probably better off signing with an actual professional tool, which is very likely to support Linux anyway, due to being oriented more towards business use. Screen sharing, recordings and screenshots. On most desktop environments, very easy nowadays. For screenshots, the universal hotkey is the print key, which should bring up a screenshot tool or overlay. Nowadays, those solutions also allow you to straight up record videos of your desktop for instructions. Or if you want to use a proper solution, then you can just use OBS, the universal standard for streaming and recording. Screen sharing, however, is an interesting one. On most distributions that don't feature KD Plasma or GNOME, this shouldn't be an issue. However, 
On those that do, the Wayland protocol might cause some problems, whereas you can only record certain applications, while your whole screen is not working at all. Well, luckily, if you chose a distribution or a flavor that comes with KDE Plasma by default, then your chances are good that it already comes with the X Wayland bridge pre-installed, which can work around that limitation. But it's not just Plasma that profits from it. You can also install it on GNOME right there in the software store and after a quick reboot we can now share our screen. Some of you also want me to take a look at partitioning and mounting additional storage disks. And yes, you also don't need the command line for that. With a tool like GNOME Disks or the KD Partition Manager, we can shrink and extend partitions, format drives or USB sticks and also edit the mount options. I, for example, have three additional drives in my system, which I automatically connect as soon as my PC starts up. All you need to do is to deselect the user session's default, enter a mount path like slash mnt slash the name you want and identify it by its UUID so that it always gets associated with the right directory. Done! By the way, you can also back up your drive to a disk image or speed it up by enabling writing caches, though it already states why it's a bit riskier. A lot of you also asked how to connect network shares or even share directories yourself. Connecting to a network drive is as easy as opening up your file browser, head on to network or in GNOME other locations and add the share like so. Type SMB or the corresponding protocol you need, double point, two slashes and then the IP address or the hostname of your system and the share name. You will be asked for authentication if it's protected and you're done. For quick access, you can also drag it to the bookmarks and the share will now be automatically mounted as soon as you press it. If you need to access your share in a program that comes with its own file picker like DaVinci Resolve, then you can find your share in the following path. One thing that I need to mention here, however, is that KD Plasma does it a bit differently. But hey, we can also head down the traditional path and edit the slash etc slash fstep file. But hold on there. We need to use the command line for that, right? Wrong. Check this out. On many desktop environments, it's already possible to elevate your permissions similar to what Run as an Administrator does on Windows. On GNOME, we can also do that. Press Ctrl L to make the path on top writable. Then enter admin double points and hit enter. You will be asked for your password and are now in an elevated state, which allows you to create new directories, open and save files, edit permissions anywhere in your system and much much more. Though to be honest that's not even necessary most of the time, since simply editing a file normally and saving it would bring up authentication anyway. So yeah, desktop text editor and editing system files without needing the command line. Easy peasy. Ok, file sharing. This works a bit differently on Linux since on Windows you could theoretically share any folder on your system, which frankly can get a bit messy if you do that a lot. On Linux sharing files and directories with other computers on your local network is as easy as creating or copying them into the public directory and enable file sharing in the settings. You can also set a password if you want, but you generally don't have to. Oh, and what do we have here? Remote desktop. That's right. GNOME comes with remote desktop functionality right out of the box. Simply enable it, allow remote control so that you can operate it and set a user and password. Now we can connect with an RDP client like Remina to our system. Though one note, it doesn't seem to work if you're connected via LAN, since it only works when I connect to my surface, but not the other way around. Not really sure what's going on here, but no command line. Last but not least, I thought I'd also show you how you can create a bootable USB stick if you either want to distro hop or even go back to Windows. For all of my Linux sticks, I used the Fedora Media Writer. Yeah, really. It worked for flashing Debian, Ubuntu, HoloISO and of course Fedora. And for Windows, all you have to do is to format your stick with XFAT and copy the contents of the Windows ISO over. This should work most of the time, however, some UEFI configurations have a problem with it apparently. But hey, why bother with the command line? Of course, there are a lot of things that I haven't touched and not everything is perfect yet. AMD users, for example, can't run DaVinci Resolve without downloading additional packages via the command line, even though it would come with a graphical installer. You also can't easily add more repos on every single distribution. On some you can, on some you can't. 
But despite all of that, I think that using a certain set of professional tools or having to need to add additional repositories in the first place is something that is somewhat more of a specialized use case. Since nowadays with flat packs that are enabled by default, it's very unlikely that you ever have to do this. And there are of course differences and limits between desktop environments. Like you can't create directories in the elevated mode in Dolphin, KD's file manager, but dragging them in works? Here's the thing, even though feature fragmentation is a problem, you still can just install most applications, file browsers and tools via the software store, which could make your life easier if you really don't want to deal with the command line at all. The terminal is the most powerful tool on Linux, or as a matter of fact, on every single operating system. And if you manage to learn it, then you definitely won't regret it. But you don't have to use it if you don't want to for most use cases. And that's where I leave it. So in the end, I did successfully complete all of my tasks. And I hope that I have shown you something new today. If I did, then please make sure to show it with a like. And also don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well. Thanks for watching everyone. And all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.